Our viewers, so today we're going to be talking about the Mauritius budget speech, something I do every year and how it will affect uh, foreigners and expats. Um, so I'm going to run through the different segments. Uh, one's going to be real estate, next one's going to be business, next one's going to be employment and then other. So I'm going to run through the, the categories and let's let's get started with foreign real estate. Okay, so uh, foreigners can now buy property outside of the known residence schemes like PDSs, IRSs. Um, you are allowed to acquire one property um, and the value of that property needs to be $500,000 or above. Then this is, uh, this is also a, a registration duty of 10%. So that's where the government uh, makes their money is that 10% registration duty on anything above the $500,000. Um, and the property must not exceed 5,276 square meters and cannot be situated on state land. State land is like lease land, which is like beach property. Um, so it needs to be in an area that's not uh, leasehold land. Okay. Next thing is a sale of service land in PDS or smart city. So you can buy a plot of land. We get a lot of South Africans that ask us, can we buy a piece of land and build our own, um, our own home? So you can. Um, so in this scheme, you're allowed to buy a property um, that's the size not exceeding 2,100 square meters. And they have extended this. It was running up until June 2024, and they've extended that to June 2026. So there's another like three, three years where you can buy property in smart cities. Okay. Next thing is a new thing they're launching is uh, senior living. So senior living is uh, for retirees that you can buy in a senior living residence. Um, and that this is a called a PDS senior li a living um, and it, it, the property must exceed 200,000 US dollars um, and you need to be about 50 years old to buy into one of these schemes. Um, the next scheme is uh, the sustainable city scheme um, and this is also you can also require you can also acquire a residence permit. This is a minimum entry fee of three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and uh, that's in the sustainable city scheme. Okay, so you need to look out for those. Um, okay, process, processing applications, IRS, RES, and IHS, CSC, and um, those schemes are, it's a new scheme. Um, any of those new schemes, they used to all have different processing fees and costs. Um, now those costs have been formalized to 25,000 rupees per an application. So across the board, whether it's uh, you're doing an application for the, the IRS, RES, PDS, or retirement scheme. They all have a fixed fixed admin fee of 25,000 rupees. Okay, so that's foreign real estate. Let's moving on. I'm going to turn the page here. Next is business and how things change uh, from a business point of view. So one of the problems that they used to have is when, when in, in business having to do different, uh, talk to different agencies. So if you're talking to a bank, you're talking to um, the guys of the Economic Development Board, they had different reference numbers. So now what they're going to be doing is they're going to bring out a unique identification number. This is for the EDB, business registration, MRA, all of them will have one number that they recognize you and your application for. So there's no more confusion. So this is, this is a, a great thing to come out. Okay. Um, next thing, retired non-citizens don't need to open a bank account straight away. So this was something that, that probably the hardest thing in our application process is getting the bank accounts opened. I always talk about that. Um, why is it hard? Because it's KYC, know your customer, black listings, where you're coming from, where your money's coming from. So this is something that uh, that takes the slows the process down. So now what they're saying is they'll approve your permit and after your permit's approved, you can open your bank account. Okay, so um, you don't need a local bank account. They will accept a letter from your, your home bank account. So if you're South African, British, Italian, French, Canadian, if you get a letter from your current bank saying that you have sufficient funds to meet the retirement permit uh, criteria, that, that they'll accept that. And then once you get here, you can open your local bank account. Okay. Okay, investment, uh, uh, investment requirements exempted at issuance of permits. So the initial investment required for an investor permit is 50,000, for a self-employed $35,000. Um, also, they're saying, okay, once they've granted your permit, you have four weeks to open up your bank account and, and transfer that money in. So we used to have to try to get the bank account open, hustle, get the money sitting here, waiting, then take a, a statement of your account stamped by the bank, 
to the EDB to get your permit open. They're saying you have four weeks after that to do that. So the, it's, it's, it's making the process easier and quicker. Okay. Okay, so that's the biggie from a business side. Next point we're going on to is working in Mauritius. So a lot of you guys get a lot of calls of people looking for jobs and how they get involved in, in job websites and how we can help them get their permits. When applying for a job and a company employs you, they will apply for your permit. You won't have to apply for your permit. Okay, so monthly salary threshold. There was a threshold for a foreigner that you had to, the minimum you could get paid was 60,000 rupees, which put off a lot of local companies because that's quite a high salary in, uh, in, a, media, in a media management job. So now they've dropped that from 60,000 to 30,000. So now it makes foreign workers way more attractive to employ, easier to employ. Um, and it, that why they're doing this is they're doing this to bring more skills into the country. So it's a skill upliftment policy. Um, which I think is very interesting. Um, Mauritians might disagree because that's taking jobs away from them. But um, in, in certain uh, sectors where we need the ups uh, upscale of skills, it's a really good idea. Okay. Um, next thing they're doing is you no, no longer, if you're applying for an uh, occupational permit, you no longer need to open a local bank at account at the time of application. So similar to the other permits, you can open your, job, uh, your, your bank account after you get the job. Okay. The ratio of foreign to local employees has been ab abolished. So they used to have a ratio of how many foreign employees you could uh, employ. That's been abolished now. Well, it's going into government to get voted. So this is the budget. It hasn't gone through yet, so we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. Okay. Um, Non-citizens on a tourist or business visa will be allowed to apply for a work permit. So you'd be, while you're here on your tourist visa or your work visa, you can apply for a work permit. Okay. That wasn't the, the case uh, before. Okay, foreign workers applying for occupational permit in Mauritius will be allowed to stay for 120 days. So it won't be the, the normal 60 or 90 days. You're now allowed to stay for up to 120 days while applying for that process. There'll be no more restrictions in terms of field of study for young professional occupational permits. So you, they're restricted to certain sectors like IT now. If you're a young professional um, and you've studied in Mauritius, you can apply for any kind of job, not in the specific sectors anymore. So they're opening that up to young professionals. Okay, um, Okay. so now medical. Medical's got a big thing. I've brought a quite a few doctors and uh, surgeons in. Um, and now what they're saying, uh, the introduction of a silent consent program uh, for foreign workers that are going to be working in professions of the following councils in Mauritius. Allied Health, Professional Council, Dental Council, Medical Council, Veterinary Council. So if you're in the medical field, um, they, they're going to give you a, a four-week silent consent that if, the, if the, you've put your application in and the guys haven't come back to you within four weeks, you get consent. Okay, so uh, that's, that's for working in Mauritius. Um, and, and lastly, we're going to go into the other, the other page, which is how they're changing the tax system. So this, has, like I said, hasn't gone through yet, but the, this is the new consent on the tax system. So they're going to be pro uh, personal income tax. So this is a progressive personal income tax system. So... For, from the 1st of July 2023, um, you'll pay 0% tax on your first 390,000 rupees of income, 2% tax on the next 40,000, 4% tax on the next 40,000, and so on and so on and so on, and up to a maximum tax rate of 20%. Okay. So, foreign expertise. An 18-month international expert training visa. So you'll be allowed to come in here and high-end research for development or training. They get a grant to 18 month visa for people that come in and do training programs or an expert in a field teaching people how to set up factories, um, any kind of uh, new technology or science and technology where you have a set up, you get an 18 month permit, exceptional permit. Okay. Okay. Women, ladies out there. So they, they, they're pushing um, equal rights and equality, which is great. Uh, women, they're saying now that if you employ any new ladies in the in the business, they they will give a grant of the first fifteen thousand rupees to the company. Um, also, they're requiring that uh, that all big listed companies have twenty five percent of women on their board of investors and their board of uh, their board of directors. Um, so that's also uh, it's also great because you're going to see more ladies sitting on boards making decisions. Okay, medical tourism. Uh, medical patients and retirees that come in and have up to two accompanying caretakers will be eligible for a premium visa. 
For foreign retirees above the age of 60 years old will also be, have access to medical insurance. So this is a big thing, guys. You used, to, you used to not be able to get medical insurance after the age of 65 and 60 even. So companies would say, okay, you're on, you, now you turn 60 and they cancel your medical cover. So now the government's put this in that you are eligible or eligible for medical cover after the age of 60, which is great for retirees. It's a peace of mind thing. So guys, all of these new things have been brought up in the latest budget speech. They haven't been voted through parliament, but you can see the progression that the guys are pitching this. The Minister of Finance has pitched this. They're going to vote on it. We'll know in the next few weeks if what's gone through and what hasn't gone through. So you can see the move by the Mauritian government is to bring in skilled labor, to bring in more foreign investment, to bring in more expats to come and live and enjoy Mauritius and, and contribute to the economy. So I think everything is positive. If you need more information, you can email me on info at rolfinternational.com um, and then we can get onto a free 10 minute call and we can chat further about your opportunity of moving to this beautiful island and how we can make it happen for you and your family. Thanks guys, see you next time. Ciao.